What is up guys, Sound Alchemist here with Gersh1 and we're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater yeah. Let them know what it is, G-Thang. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, simply comment down below. Put question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. Uh, and that is what? Dragon Punch 903 did. He asks, are you guys excited for the Tyranid Codex being announced to come out next? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a Tyranid player in our group and he cries every th time we play against yeah. him. Um, even though 8th edition Tyranids aren't too bad, especially if you spam... Um, like hordes. And gene stealers. Gene stealers are, are nasty, yeah. Uh, before my... Mega Knobs used to go into a squad of anything Tyranid and they would destroy it. This yeah. time around, the a squad of three Mega Knobs charged into a squad of Gene Stealers, didn't do anything, and then got destroyed. Yeah, if you guys want to see that, it's in our most recent uh, battle report. We do have a playlist for battle reports, so check those out. Yep, um, so what what do you think would be the best uh, thing for the Tyranids once it comes out? Because what we do know is about the high fleets, right? Right, they're going to have different high fleets, so different abilities will pertain to those high fleets. I believe it's like, if you don't move, you get like a plus one to your shooting or something like that, depending on which high fleet it is. But anyway, what I really want to see for the Tyranids uh, this edition is a little bit more adaptability. Like, I always thought... Tyranids were supposed to be played, you know, spamming units, and that's pretty much it. But with all the high fleets, I think it's going to be a more diverse uh, list. Yeah, I, I, I really agree that that's going to end up happening because that's what you kind of see with um, the... Uh, the what, are you, what do the Space Marines have? The Command Pro? No, no, the... Uh... Uh, chapter, chapter tactics. tactics. So like chapter tactics kind of push your army to be a certain type. Um, and f I think that's going to happen for Tyranid. So uh, you're going to get bonuses that really um, benefit and really like um, give you the incentive to create either a horde army, a shooty army, or whatever type of army um, that may be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do, I, I do think that. But the, the downfall to that is when you're building your list... You better know what type of high fleet you want to fight with. Yeah, that's um, true. And then at the same time, you can't um, you you can't go into a battle with the idea of theme. Um, you kind of have to go into a battle with the idea of I'm gonna win, so I have to choose the best high fleet. Even though this is the Kraken high or the Kraken color scheme, mm -hmm. I have to choose um, yeah, Gorgon or something. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think in tournaments, I'm not 100 percent sure, but in tournaments, you have to play the high fleet that your models are legit painted after. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, bring out your white spray paint and just like do your own. Do your own colors, that way you can say, oh, this is like a splinter fleet of this, yeah, or something like that. I was going to say, does, does um, G GW let you play in a tournament if your models aren't painted? No, I think they have to be at least like two or three colors on them or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, comment down below, guys, and let us know if you're a Tyranid player, what you want to see. That's right. Uh, one thing I just want to, you know, since we're on the Tyranid thing, there is a Tyranid high fleet that literally fights a bunch of Chaos Demons. That is amazing. I don't know why they're fighting them since they're, they don't have biomass, but just the thought of like horn berserkers and blood letters going up against freaking gene stealers just, just looks awesome. Yep. All right, Nick, next question. Do you have one? Uh, yeah, this one is by, <coughs> oh damn. I was like cough, cough, my coffee. Dying on my spit. George Pantoja. Can I make lore friendly Primaris gray knights or am I just out of luck? You're just out of luck. Yeah. Um, I believe we talked about this the last time, but uh, the gene seed of the Grey Knights is rumored to be that of the Emperor himself. So because of that, it would be deemed too holy to kind of mess around with. So Belisarius Call would be like, nah, you guys are good. Just use our regular Ultramarine Primaris or something like that. Yeah, and they didn't, they didn't know that the Grey Knights existed 10,000 years ago. Yeah, that's true. Grey Knights were secrets. Secret secrets. DOW234 asks, if we have a fan lore, um, fan lore change, but need some guidance, could you, could we send you a copy? Yeah, definitely. We respond to you guys best if you email us at onemindsyndicate1 at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook. Um, 
let me know if you get overwhelmed. Yeah, so far I've been doing so uh, pretty good. Uh, I try to hit everybody up on Facebook that messages me, uh, usually within a day or two. So if, if not, just stay tuned. But as of right now, I'm completely caught up with everybody. So yep. yeah. Next question. <clears throat> this one's by Liam Powell. Are there any species or characters out in the 40k universe that have the standard corruption, that have withstood corruption of Nurgle's rods? Uh, yeah, so humans have, have um, been able to push um, just chaos in general away. Uh, what, they're, they're a special type of people. Are they star childs? No. Aren't those the uh, children of the Emperor, supposedly? Yeah, but I... Because the children of the Emperor... No, okay, yeah, I think they might be the children of the Emperor. Uh, but yeah, there is a specific human faction, might be the children of the Emperor, that um, have been possessed by chaos and overcome that possession. Uh, and they're s uh, sought out by the Inquisition because it, they're considered holy in a way. Because, yeah. So, yeah, that. Next question. I have one from Arrange de Lenineth. Would it be possible for GW to put new figs with re with reminiscence of the Thunder Warriors who would have survived and turned to chaos as long as time undermining forces within the Imperium? Um, so is there is, it, is there a possibility we can have Thunder Warrior looking models? Yes. Yeah, I feel like you could probably kit bash <laughs> it if you mix like the uh, the Adeptus Custodis with the Necromunda figures. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of really good um, custom figures on Daka Daka. So mm -hmm. check out that forum. Uh, the galleries are pretty badass. Cool mini or not, that's another place. Yes, they have really good uh, <clears throat> examples and stuff like that. Uh, now, as far as lore-wise, um, yeah, or it, it would be really badass because even during the Unification Wars, um, the Emperor knew about, or the Warp Travel was around. And um, when the emperor had to pacify mars or had to unify with mars you know they, they set off on their ships or whatever um and during that time you could say that some thunder warriors might have gotten like sidetracked lost in the warp or something and yeah <laughs> up there the warp yeah cat cat yusha marikov do you guys think that fulgrim would have killed ferris manis and turn to chaos without being possessed because in the book Fulgrim it implies that these two were closer than brothers whoa no yeah um if Fulgrim didn't get possessed he wouldn't have killed his bro um again they were bros before hoes before any of this but obviously when you get possessed by a demon that that kind of changes things and it's like bros come a little after hoes so yeah you gotta chop off your bro's head <laughs> yeah. next question comes from max power can you please do a bunch of necromunda videos you guys promised videos on all the houses a while back but from what i can tell you only did the general overview pre-order is in less than two weeks what better way than now yeah thanks for letting us know we're gonna do our best to take advantage of that um and we're gonna look into that. I think the scripts are out there. I just had to find them. <laughs> um, and then you go on to ask, ask, are you guys playing, planning on playing Necromunda when it comes out? So Necromunda is kind of like its own thing, right? It's not, it's not like eighth edition 40K, right? Nope, yep, that's basically, yeah, it's its own thing. Uh, I'll buy the box because it's probably gonna have models that I really like that I could use in my Inquisition army. Are we actually going to film and, and present a, a video? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, we didn't. We never played the uh, Battle at Calth or Betrayal at Calth. Yeah. And, or the Burning at Prospero, because those are a little bit separate. But the models, again, could be used for 40K, so. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to do a giveaway for it yeah. when it comes out, but mm -hmm. we're probably not going to um, play. Yeah, honestly, it doesn't really intrigue me that much, but, I mean, the models look cool. Yeah, and then the downfall to this channel... I guess is that we were known for lore so our lore videos get a lot of views whenever we put out a battle report not so much part of it or a big part of it is because of quality we don't really invest that much uh, into filming that kind of stuff right that might change in the future if you guys want that kind of stuff 
uh, support us on Patreon, honestly. That's that's the best way to, yeah. to go about doing that. Next question. Zigzag. Can you guys do a little summary on the Horus Heresy series and what and what to order or what order should a person read them in? I just finished reading A Galaxy in Flames and I have no idea what to read next or if anything should have been read before. So the Horus Heresy novels do go pretty much in general order of the timeline. Um, what my opinion to you to do is pick up any book that interests you and just start reading. Um, you don't really need to know that much, you know, backstory or what's going to happen. As long as you dive into it, you can kind of get a good feel for the whole, the whole concept of what's going on during the Horus Heresy. And then, once you're actually invested into it and you're in the middle of it, go to the uh, Black Library, and I believe they have that timeline there of the whole, you know, uh, chain of books. There you go. Yeah. So just dive into it head first would be my opinion, and then go to the Black Library and, you know, Retrace your steps. Don't be killed by the Harlequins. Never Harlequins. Next question comes from Guy Luca Borg. What is the chance of the Imperium recovering an STC in prime condition with all information in it? Uh, and then how does how do STCs work in the first place? So we have an STC um, 40 facts video. Check mm -hmm. that out. Uh, but basically they're just um standard template constructs <laughs> yeah it's like like a, like a huge usb essentially it just stores info uh-huh if you ever played mass effect there's conduits that like show up and like um humans interacted with those conduits and i think the conduits like shot like or took possession of certain humans and like gave them visions and stuff like that it's kind of like that where like a human shows up enters the information and then it like it doesn't like possess the person but it, it downloads that to whatever device they have nowadays it's the adeptus mechanicus so it probably gets uploaded directly into their brain and stuff like that bits and pieces because an stc is full of information yeah or i guess another way to think about it is kind of like the new kiosks at mcdonald's Oh, yeah. Where, like, before you had to talk to a person, and then you, like, look at the menu and blah, blah, blah. Well, now it's just a kiosk, and then you touch screen, you order what you want. It tells you what the Big Mac has on it. Same thing with an STC. It's just a, a giant McDonald's um, <laughs> self-service portal thing. Yeah. Because, um, you know, machines are taking our jobs. Next question. This one's by Philip Lobb. In your honest opinion... Which Primarchs would you like to see die? Uh, I think Ferris should have survived and Korax die in his place. I would have also liked to see Conrad Kurz live instead of Perturabo. I want... I, I, don't, I hate that I... The, um... Ferris Manus died. Who do I wish I could... That could die? Mm -hmm. Uh... <laughs> Perturabo. Yeah. <laughs> that was gonna be mine. Uh, bring back Sanguinius. Keep the, uh... The angel alive and kill Pertrabo. Yep, Sanguinius is a really badass model. Um, Ferris Manus. Yeah. Anything else? That's it, right? That, that's what he's got. <laughs> uh, next question comes from Bruce Williams. Oh, no, sorry. Bruno Witterman. <laughs> Bruce Williams? Am I, am I nearsighted? What the fuck? Everything's blurry. <laughs> hey guys, I love your show. I got my hands on a shitload of Australian firstborn, but I also really like Space Marines. So the question is, we've answered this before, but I'll answer it again. What Space Marine chapter, lore-wise, would be most logical to combine with the Vostrians? We've said it before and we said it again. Imperial Fists. Imperial Fists. They like to get stuck in and fight the, fight the hard war, so I'd go with some fisties. Yes, yes. Next question is by the homie, Luke Arsguel. I don't think that's your last name, but that's what I'm going to say. If enough orcs believed that chaos or another faction did not exist, will it happen? No. We've talked about this before. Um, orcs are not magicians. Orcs are not... <laughs> they're not the fucking Doctor Strange. Um, it's just very basic mm -hmm. um, psychic powers that they have. Um, and those are the questions for this Today. week. Today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video feel out of it 
<laughs> thanks so much for everything guys support us on patreon a simple dollar a month helps us create more videos and um yeah yeah, that's right. So hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, like you said, Patreon, and the Book of Faces, because uh, we post there each and every day. As always, I'm the Sound Alchemist. Gersh One. And we are out of here. <laughs>